they had always come to America. Throughout the 1800s, most immigrants had traveled from the familiar places, Germany, Scandinavia, England. The Irish, Catholic in faith and starving from famine, flocked to the American shores in the 1840s. A million and a half poor, desperate souls who found little hospitality in the new world. Nativism swelled, burned, but eventually dimmed. But the new immigrants, those starting in the 1880s, were not from the old countries that had founded the nation. They were from Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia, Italians, Slavics, Greeks, Austro-Hungarians, Poles, Russians, Chinese. How could they ever be Americans? If the Catholic beliefs of the Irish and many Germans had alarmed some before, how would they deal with the Italians from the land of the Pope, Greeks with their Orthodox faith, and Jews? Why had they even come? They came for America. These people, many who had lived their entire lives under despotism and tyranny, came for the promise of democracy and the unalienable rights of life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Groups such as Jews fleeing violent pogroms in their own land, escaping religious persecution, arrived as refugees, not unlike the pilgrims of American lore. They sought the opportunity to build a new life through hard work, like the Chinese who, replacing the white workers who left in search of silver, helped build the railroad that finally connected this great land. Again, these groups met with adversity and animosity. Nativism swelled once more, often in the hearts of sons who forgot who their fathers were. The Chinese Exclusion Act, passed in 1882, renewed again and again, prohibited one group in particular, while the Immigration Act of 1917 and its literacy requirement was aimed at all whose stock varied too far from the original. The new immigrants were mostly unskilled laborers, easily exploitable at cheap wages, and resented by the old workers. They kept to themselves, often creating tight ethnic communities, refusing to assimilate. But their children did. Often it was their children and their children's children that shaped the 20th century. Many thought their numbers were too great, that they would usher in a flood of immigrants that would change the nation. And they did, one immigrant in particular. She was brought to America without her consent, yet she embraced her new home. Like many, she settled in a city, a silent sentinel. Her words were delivered through a young Jewish female poet. A mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shores. Send these the homeless tempest toss to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. There is nothing more American than wanting to be an American.